Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel, my name is Shanks and today we are back with a brand new video commentary, this time for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the beautiful map Anorian. At the top right side of the map we have the green Isengard's player Anon, his ally at the bottom right side is the purple Isengard's player Boogeyman, at the bottom left side we have the blue Rohan player Christmas Stream, and his ally at the top left side is the red Rohan player Adderall. Beautiful, it's a double Rohan against double Isengard matchup, the Riddermark against the forces of Saruman. We have two peasants moving forward and also from the blue Rohan player we will have a lot of peasants in the beginning of the game because that's the power of Rohan. We have really strong early game, you know, you can make those peasants pretty cheap actually, 400 resources only from your farms inside but also outside of your base. The Isengard's player is actually pressuring the farm at the bottom left side, that's something we don't normally see because most of the time they use the Urukai for defensive purposes instead. But the Isengard player was starting with a Uruk pit and he was demolishing it right after. Will be using the Warchan defensively. Anon is asking for help. Uh, Boogeyman has to deal now with multiple peasants and he won't be able to keep this mill alive. Very well done here from the double Rohan team. Attacking together one target, I think that's the team play you wanna see. And the farm in the backside can actually be purchased now from the Rohan player. But the Isengard player will be just in time, this way he can't be purchasing this farm now. Alright, we're gonna see more and more peasants obviously. Actually the Red Rohan player is not, you know, spamming too many peasants. Which is okay I guess because, you know, one Rohan player can spam a lot of peasants, the other one can try to go for the stable as soon as possible. The farm at the top side is not gonna be protected. It looks like that Anon, the green Isengard player, is gonna try to save for Lourdes. Which makes a lot of sense because Lourdes is gonna be a great hero against double Rohan team. Yeah, let's talk about this matchup first. I feel like early game should be in favor of Rohan team. Just because the power of Rohan early on, you know, by spamming too many peasants, you can easily fight for the map control. In the mid game, Rohan should also have the advantage because one Rohan can go for horse arches, for example, the other one can go for normal horses, or one Rohan can try to save for the middle camp. This is always a possibility as well. Uh, but in the late game, if Isengard players get double rain and if they get double Saruman, double Lords on the field, it's gonna be kinda tough for the double Rohan team. Why? Because unlike Gondor, Rohan doesn't have siege weapons and I feel like you will need some siege weapons if you wanna deal with this massive Isengard combos later on with a lot of leadership. Uh, the Rohan player, the blue Rohan player, Christmas Dream is gonna creep this work layer. He was also able to share the experience with the Hobbit Mary. He's almost rank 4 now. On the other side, Boogeyman is asking for help to creep this one. Boogeyman's resource income is not looking that great. He has only three farms inside his base, three furnaces. And then I'll go for the furnace number four. Uh, not going for Uruk Pit just yet, which makes sense because his eco is not gonna be that great. He needs to make now, you know, make multiple furnaces first. And the Blue Rohan player has actually quite a lot of peasants on the field, and both of these peasants are, you know, level two. And the Hobbit is even almost rank four, which is pretty nice. Warchan is gonna be used defensively once again, and that's what I was saying earlier. It's gonna be so hard for the double Rohan, I mean double Isengard team to fight for the map control early on if they don't make any Urukai. Anon is actually not going for like never mind, he has already Lords on the field. And now he's going for the work pit, which I like a lot. Because this way you can actually fight for the map control and you can end up dealing with those um, peasants. The Blue Rohan player was just able to secure the second creep. Let me check his power points. Yes, he was already able to collect one power point, which will unlock the heal. Hobbit was able to get stealthed, but remember, Lords can always use the cripple ability by right clicking on it, he will automatically shoot at those invisible units on the map if he is, you know, close by. The Rohan uh, units, uh, you know, in, the, in this case the Rohirrim, they are quite weak against Lords. You can see that yourself. They are getting two shotted. And the cripple ability can actually end up one-shotting them easily. And Lords can now go for the creep, but he has to be careful. On the other side, the Red Rohan player was also able to capture the middle, which is something I like a lot. The Blue Rohan player is gonna go for the stable. He has already two Rohirrim on the field. Let's see who will be able to get the creep here. Remember the cripple ability is on cooldown, which will also deal quite a lot of damage to the creeps. But the creep will be secured, as well as the money from the Rohan player Christmas Dream. Which is pretty nice. Now you can run with the troll to the middle and those towers they should be easily able to take him down. On the other side we're gonna see soon some work uh, riders on the field. One of them is already on the field. Anon is gonna demolish his uh, lumber mill. He knows that the economy from Boogeyman 
the purple eyes in God's play is kind of doomed. So he will need some money and, you know, taking the middle uh, in the backside is gonna be helpful. But howsoever, they don't have Urukai, I mean pikemen on the field just yet. And the pikemen, they need to be joining the battlefield as soon as possible. Alright, also the second creep at the bottom side is gonna be secured by the blue Rohan player. He was actually able to get all the creeps from the map. Remember he was able to creep the work layer defensively early on. And he was able to take this one as well. Look his power points. He's now gonna go for the heal. And he was almost able to collect one more power point afterwards. We will need some more towers around this side. The work pit got demolished. Anun can actually now, you know, choose if you wanna go for the units Urukai, combos and then upgrades. Or if you wanna potentially save for Saruman instead. Okay, uh, Warchan has been used on those Warcriders. It's gonna make them stronger than those Rohirrim. Rohirrim are only level 1. But it's not a big deal because they have to well in the middle of the map. And uh, the Red Rohan player on the other side is gonna go for 4 statues, which will make those heroes much cheaper. They will now cost 30% less. I mean, it doesn't sound so crazy on a hero like Theodin, who, you know, who originally cost only 1200 resources, but Aragorn, for example, he will now cost 2450 instead of 3500. Beautiful. And the Warcriders are gonna put some pressure. That's really nice. I think Boogeyman still needs some time. He's now going for the Armory. The Uruk Pit is finally level 2. We're gonna hopefully see some pikemen. This way he can keep those mills alive. Let me take a look into the level from Lords. He's let, you know, almost rank 4. Rank 5 is gonna be needed to unlock the leadership, which is gonna increase the damage of Nerby troops by 60%. That's quite a lot. Alright, and it looks like that this Rohan player is actually going for Aragorn, or maybe for Legolas, let's see what is gonna be his choice. Um, we have now some units coming from the from the base, some peasants, for some reason I think he wanna make some combos, and he has no farm inside his middle. And I feel like if you don't wanna go for heroes, you wanna make some farms, but I'm pretty certain that he's saving for Aragorn. He has almost the money for that, he can already recruit Legolas. Uh, he's asking for help because he has no, you know, nothing on the field that can fight for the map control, so he will need the help of the Blue Rohan player all the time. The first rush is gonna happen. Does he have heavy armor purchase? Yes, he does. The combos, they will be using Warchant, but is this gonna be enough? Luckily, Boogeyman has some towers around this area, and those Rohirrim, they don't have leadership or the Horseman shields just yet. Towers are not getting demolished in time. And Rohan will be able to get some power points. He was already able to collect around one and a half power points after heal and draft. Remember, heal is gonna be the you know the key here if you wanna win the big fight in the middle, which is gonna happen pretty soon, I'm assuming. Because with the land, you can deny the Isengard player the leadership. You can go for a beautiful trample, especially around this side, with Aragorn potentially being around, uh, or statues in the backside. Those Rohirrim, they're gonna one shot everything. Saruman is already on the field from Anon. Saruman and Lourdes, both are great heroes. You know, Lourdes can obviously cripple down one of the enemy heroes. In this case, potentially this Legolas. I don't know about Legolas here. I mean, he's gonna be nice. You can always snipe some work riders. He's gonna be nice later on because you can always snipe Saruman or Lourdes from a very safe distance. But he's also very squishy. And sending him out like this is potentially a you know dangerous choice. Remember Lourdes and uh, also Legolas, they have the same amount of movement speed. Howsoever, Isengard's player can go for the Palantir. And this way he can make his Lourdes slightly faster than the enemy Legolas. And then he can get in the range and cripple him down. And once Legolas is crippled, there is no way of saving him actually. Very well done here from the Blue Rohan player. He keeps up the pressure. Legolas is gonna do his work. Beautiful Hulk strike here from the young Legolas. He's already level 3 now. Level 4 will be, you know, he will be able to train the archers, which by the way means in those kind of situations that you can rank up a level 1 Rohan combo with the Yeoman archers to level 3 instantly, which is a huge power spike for the Rohan combos. I think he's now gonna save for Aragorn. He's going for Theorian first. Was already able to purchase the fighter upgrade from the archer range level 2. It looks like they're gonna, you know, switch the lumber mill once again because also Anon wants to make some units. He's gonna go for the upgrades first, which is okay, I guess. Because the purple eyes and guts player has already some units. This way you can actually be faster. However, this base is not protected at all. And it looks like Rohan has now the horseman shields 
purchased on this Rohirrim and that's gonna make them quite tanky against arrows. Look at that. They are tanking all the arrows, no big deal. The furnace on the backside is gonna be taken down first. The armory is gonna be the second target of the Blue Rohan player. The towers, they need to be demolished in time, but he's not going for it. Power points are rising. He has almost enough power points for the Elven Wood. Fireball is gonna be used. That's a nice one, but it is just not enough. There are no pikemen and there are a lot of Rohirrim inside the base. The furnaces are getting melted, melted down, but hear me out, guys. Killing the furnaces now is a win-win situation for the Rohan player. Why? They were almost about to hit rank 3, which is not gonna only make them quite tanky, no, but it's gonna be also making those furnaces like a very strong tower. He will be able to shoot down the enemy units and he keeps up the pressure all the time. I love to see that. In the meantime, we have a fight. Alvin Wood, Tainted Land though. I don't like the positioning of Tainted Land at all. Should be using it around this side. And taking a fight here is gonna be a mistake. Lourdes is still on the rank 4. He has no leadership unlocked. And you know, trust me on that one guys, the Rohan team, they have much more leadership around this side. Tilden in the back side is gonna replace the war chant. He's gonna give 50% damage and armor. But the statue is gonna give them 100% damage boost, which is a lot. Saruman has to be very careful. He's quite healthy still, and he has the warm tongue ability available and also fireball. Legolas is almost uh, level 4. Very close. Tainted Land is gonna give them some armor. I think it's around 40% if I'm not mistaken. Yes, nice fireball by the way from Saruman, but he has to be careful. Theoden though, he's running down, but can he actually snipe him down? Legolas, I mean, Lourdes was also not paying attention. Never mind, he was actually crippling down Legolas, but he's in a really safe spot. Bad trample here, but he should be able to get away. They have also double Theoden, so if, you know, one of them, one of them dies, it's not a big deal. Taking a fight here is gonna be a mistake. Warchant is gonna fall off soon, but remember there is another Isengard who has also Warchant, which is gonna be used now. Lourdes, I mean, not Lourdes, Legolas has to be careful. The statues are not getting demolished in time, but look at the Isengard base at the top right side in the meantime. Boogeyman... Oh, Anon already left the game actually, and Boogeyman now is playing 1 versus 2 at this point. Everything is getting melted down. It looks like the Rohan player has to give up the middle. Lourdes is level 5 now, the leadership is unlocked, but it is a 2v1 situation. And he has to watch over his own army, he has to watch over his heroes, but he also has to watch around, you know, over his second base. The Zeta has been taken down. Theoden is getting some experience, but he's running through pikemen, and he will be even able to fight those fake pikemen, no big deal. Full upgraded Rohan horses. Uh, Theoden is rank 4 now, I mean rank 2 now, not rank 4. Rank 4 is gonna be the dream. Uh, uh, the other Theoden is actually one level closer to the huge power spike, which is the Glorious Charge. Which, by the way, is almost making those Rohirman invincible. Theoden is gonna get sniped down, and he's gonna be pretty much one-shotted at this point. The combos, one of them is level 7, one of them is level 5. So they are hitting like an absolute track with the leadership of Lourdes. Lourdes' cripple ability is on cooldown, and Legolas now doesn't have to be too, you know, too much careful. This Isengard base is gonna be, you know, rebuilding over time. He obviously needs some more pikemen to protect that. One of the furnaces is also rank 3. The base here is looking much safer, because look at that. 3 level 3 furnaces, full towers, 1 combo battalion healing up over time. The Steodian has to be careful, he's very low. Uh, let me actually take a look into that. Yeah, Boogeyman can also go for Lords because the, you know, because the Lords and Saruman he has, he has from his ally Anon. He can also recruit one more Saruman and one more Lords. Which is pretty nice, because then you have double lords, you have double cripple ability, which means you can actually snipe two heroes at pretty much the same time. I'm actually surprised that Boogeyman is playing that. It's a 2v1 situation after all. Uh, Alvin allies will be used, and he's gonna use warm tongue on them, which is something I don't like to see that much. It's a waste, because, you know, the Alvin units at this point of the game are not gonna be super impactful. And it looks like that Boogeyman is also not demolishing those towers, and the Rohan player, the blue Rohan player Christmas time, is actually getting a lot of power points. Christmas dream, not Christmas time. 150 command points available. I mean, obviously, this is not Rise of the Witch King. I was, you know, kind of confused for a second, because in BFMU1, the command points are always set. You can't increase or decrease them. That's not possible. And the red Rohan player is also not doing too much, actually, at this point. It's like a 1v1 situation between the Blue Rohan player and the Purple Isengard player. <clears throat> However, 
You know, he can at least support his ally with some power points like heal, for example. He has also Legolas, who's gonna be annoying to deal with. Legolas is now almost rank 5. Rank 7 will be unlocking the Arrowwind, which is one of the most powerful, you know, single target abilities in the game. It can be used also on multiple targets, but if you end up using it only on one target, one hero, you can actually one-shot almost every hero in the game. Like even, Le even Gandalf, for example. If you catch Gandalf all alone, you will be one-shotting him. The Blue Rohan player is going actually for the end smooth. <laughs> That's something I'd, you know, let's see if this is gonna work out or not. The ends, if they are raging, but they won't, they will just pretty much get one-shotted at this point, right? Yeah, they are gonna get one-shotted. Yeah, I mean, Lord's leadership, you know, plus the war chant and highly leveled combos. They won't go for a trample, but they go for a trample anyway. Rain is gonna be used. There is a tainted land on the field, which, you know, you can use to regain the leadership. Uh, one end was actually able to deal quite a lot of damage because remember, ends they don't care about your leadership. If they trample your tra trample down your combos, they're gonna die. I mean, your combos are gonna die, not the end. <laughs> and yeah, it's hard for Boogeyman to protect both the bases at the same time. But on the other side, he was able to collect quite a lot of power points. He has now four power points collected after the Tainted Land, Warchan, and the Freezing Rain. No industry, which is not gonna be needed at this point because he has double ways. He has a lot of furnaces, he has a great amount of resource income. I think at some point Boogeyman has to save for the second Saruman. This way he can actually end up making two armies. For now he's only able to defend, he has no siege weapons which is gonna be needed if you wanna break the wall and go inside the Rohan base. The blue Rohan player was now able to purchase the middle. He has some Rohirrim arches on the field for the mobility. And also Legolas was able to rank them up. Now, the Tainted Land is still from the Isengard's player. Uh, we have actually no Elven Wood available just yet for the Blue Rohan player. I mean, for the Red Rohan player, sorry. He's quite behind. And look at that. Four farms under the control of the Blue Rohan player. So the Red Rohan player has only the farms inside the space. However, most of them are actually already level 3. So he has some, you know, some great amount of resource income still. Uh, this tier then is level 2. The other one is almost rank 4. Look at this. Actually, he's, you know, only one power, you know, one level, even less than that, away from the Glorious Charge. Which can change everything. Because at this point, the Red Rohan player is going to unlock his uh, Elven Wood pretty soon. Then it's going to be double land against one land. Which is going to be a nightmare for the Isengard's player. Oh, <laughs> Cripple plus the Fireball, but he gets knocked back actually to the well. Which is going to make it hard for the Isengard's player to actually take him down. Here then has been taken down immediately. During all this time we have a fight in the base of the Isengard's player. He has now enough power points for the Elven Wood. The other one is actually getting quite a lot of power points because Boogeyman is not able to delete his structures in time. However, he will be able to kill the middle once again. And also the Blue Rohan player is not demolishing his structures in time. He's losing quite a lot of Rohirrim. And if you don't demolish those structures like wells, stageways and towers, you will give a lot of power points to your opponent, and indeed, look at that, the power points are rising, guys. It's a 2v1, by the way, now, since like around 5 minutes, I would say. He's gonna go for a trample, but he needs to be careful, there are too many towers and level 10 combos, they don't joke with you guys. They deal quite a lot of damage. But Glorious Charge, in the meantime, has been unlocked, and that's gonna change everything. We have End Allies summon as well. Now the main army has to go back. Lords is around and he has cripple ability available one of them you know the level 10 combo was actually able to survive he's gonna go for another trample nice fireball by the way one of the horses is down the level 10 will be saved legolas is gonna be able to get away as well lords has cripple ability available but theodian was actually i think able to survive question mark no theodian has been taken down but he's gonna get revived and he will be back with level 4 ability which is the glorious charge Rain is available, but Rain is not gonna do too much at this point of the game, in my opinion. Because there is double land, and there is one land from the Isengard anyway, so this land can be always used from the double Rohan team to regain the leadership. And Rain is also not cancelling the, you know, the passive effect of a Glorious Charge. Glorious Charge is not like a passive leadership, it's like an active leadership. So I don't know if you lose actually your stats about armor and damage, but one thing is for sure, you don't lose your slow resistant. You know, once you have Glorious Charge, your units can trample down the enemy units, they won't get slowed down during the time. And even if the rain is active, this is gonna be still the case. 
An Isengard's player is actually surprisingly, surprisingly close to the uh, Balrog summon, which can pretty much one-shot the Rohan base easily. And he's only 4 power points away from that. So he's pretty close, and I think this game is still winnable for Isengard's player. Because let's be honest, the Red Rohan player is not doing too much at this point. He's just, you know, losing Rohirrim Arches, because Rohirrim Arches, without AOM leadership, and if they are not highly leveled, they won't be able to deal with the Isengard combos. And he's also not spotting his ally either by his rushes. The medal is gonna be recaptured once again from the Blue Isengard, Blue Rohan player, sorry, not Isengard's player. We have Speechcraft being used on these combos, but they are almost, you know, full level, one of them is already level 10. Uh, the one in the backside is recovering over time. Isengard now has 600 command points available because, you know, when your ally leaves before he is defeated, you will not only get his army, you will get his money as well, as well as his command points. So normally Isengard has 300 command points available in a 2v1, 2v2 situation, but because his ally was also Isengard, he gets to use the 300 command points from his ally as well. Alright, so we have some level 10 units on the field, 16 power points, glorious charge, and I think that's gonna be the time when the Rohan players are gonna use land. Land trample, cover, but then the other Rohan player is gonna be able to cover as well. Uh, oh, Saruman is very, very close to die. Might be able to survive potentially. Oh, the last hit of the Rohirrim, but look at the power points from Isengard. He was able to get so many power points unlocked. Without the Army of the Dead, it's gonna be almost impossible at this point to deal with the Balrog. Now you can actually use... Uh, wait a second. Balance here. You should be using it right there, by the way. Because there is no reason of killing the Blue Rohan player since he has a middle camp. And he won't get defeated after losing his main base. But if you actually end up killing the Red Rohan player, he will get defeated unless he leaves the game before he gets defeated. This way he can, you know, give up his units and also his money to his ally, to the Blue Rohan player. Just like his ally did, you know, from the, from Boogeyman, the Purple Eyes and Gas player. Right, uh, Palantir has been used and Saruman is gonna be, not Saruman, Balrog is gonna be summoned. <laughs> kind of confused, didn't do BFME 1 commentaries for a long time. And by the way guys, if you enjoy this kind of content, please make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content like this. This channel is almost exclusively based on Battle for Middle-earth games. By the way, that was a great breath fire ability from Balrog. And I think... Nah, he actually left already. Look at this. He left already. Now it's a 1v1 situation, guys. What a fiesta game, actually. Quite nice. Glorious Charge has been used on these units. They're gonna go for a trample. Now it's gonna be much easier for Isengard's player because there is not a second Elvin Wood on the field anymore. And, you know, in a big fight, he can't cover the Tainted Land after using the first Elvin Wood. I think the Blue Rohan player is now try, gonna try to aim for the for the army of the dead. And he's only two power points away from that. Breathfire is gonna be used once again. And actually, he didn't have to leave the game. Because, you know, the Balrog was for some reason not able to kill the base. I mean, obviously, he was also paying attention around this side. They have now some Ballistas on the field. Uh, Lourdes is level 1, so he ended up losing the Lords and the Saruman from his ally. That means no more double buff. Uh, he has double lords, okay, I take it back. One of them is rank 8, and this is gonna be the hero you wanna save. However, if he loses that lords, he won't be able to revive him, because this lords, remember, was from Anon. The other Isengard's player who ended up leaving the game. I have not seen too many 2v2 games, you know, which are ending up like this. Now, it's like a 1v1 situation. Both players have a double base. The Rohan player is also in the middle camp. Saruman is to be careful, this Saruman is level 5. Remember, the level 9 Saruman got killed before. The power points are rising, and Boogeyman should not make towers at this point, but look at the power points. He has now army of the dead unlocked, guys. He's gonna use it in the middle of the map. There we go, fight for me! Army of the dead. Saruman is ending, you know, dying in a second. Army of the dead is the best army killer ability in the game. It's even better than Balrog, trust me on that one. And yeah, that's a huge power spike for the Rohan player. Because even if he gets to use Balrog once again, he has now three bases he has to kill first before he actually can do something. Look at this, army of the dead cleaning up everything. He was able to save almost all his Rohirrim. One of them is level 10, one of them is 
level 7 through Hiram Archer Battalion. Glorious Charge is gonna be available soon again. And you know, if the Isengard player uses Rain, there is still a Tainted Land on the field. He's gonna go for the Field of Fires. And for the industry, he has a great amount of resource income. Maybe he should just make double barracks, you know, double Rukpit in each phase. Just to be able to make units much, much faster. Because Army of the Dead, as we know, has a huge cooldown. And you have to make something happen during the cooldown. Because if the Rohan player gets to use Army of the Dead one time offensively, it's gonna be an absolute disaster. Trust me on that one. Because he will just able, be able to kill your base. If you wanna contest, he can always use Army of the Dead to kill your army. Yodin has to be careful. Yodin is also getting the buff of Glorious Charge, increasing his armor by 75%, which is quite a lot. Going for Trample. Units at this point are not taking too much damage, but he has to be careful, he's running through packs. At this point of the game, power points, they don't matter anymore. Because let's be honest, Isengard, but also Rohan, they already unlocked every necessary power point ability. That means feeding is not existing anymore in this game, trust me. Because what could happen, you know, you already, you know, your opponent is already Balrog, you have already Army of the Dead. And if you can afford it, go for double stable, triple stable, just keep making units all the time. I think that's gonna be the most important thing at this point. You have to keep up the pressure. And even if you lose like 2-3 battalions, I think at this point of the game, especially if you have such a great resource income like those two players, you will never run out of resources. Alright, the Zita has been taken down. And also, you know, Cloudbreak is gonna be used. Cloudbreak is not only stunning the units, you know, when they are level 1. Bes you know, besides if they have the Fear Resistance from Saruman level 5 or Gandalf around. Because those two heroes, but also Faramir, once he gets level 5, they have a, a fear resistant. You can also avoid the fear when your units are level 2 in BFME 1. But on top of that, you're gonna slow down the enemy units and also reduce their armor. So Cloud Break is pretty useful. Look at this. Even a level 10, 10 combo is getting actually demolished. I mean, obviously those horses are also really highly le leveled. One of them is level 10, the other one is level 7. They then got crippled down. I think he will die. If he focuses down Theodin with this uh, structures, but he was not able to do that. And Theodin will actually be able to survive. The power points are rising. Again, power points at this point of the game, they don't matter anymore. Balrog is gonna be available first. He's gonna use it offensively around this side. Raphire, nice one. Actually not nice enough. He should be able to kill one more structure. And now look at the situation, guys. It's one of the worst situations that can actually happen to you. Because now he has four different targets in each corner of the, of the base. It's gonna be impossible for him to kill every single one of them. He can't one-shot a level 3 farm, that's not gonna be possible. So he has to invest two attacks from Balrog. And he has to fly around. By walking like this, you're gonna invest, you know, waste a lot of your time remaining. You always have to fly. The, the Wings ability from Balrog has almost no cooldown, so you can actually spam it all the time. You need to get close to the farm. Damage that with your Ignite a little bit, so you can actually end up one-shotting that. But having four farms in each different corners is gonna make it almost impossible for you to finish off the base with Balrog all alone. And that is something you can always do about that. You know, if you know that you won't be able to finish the open and base with the Balrog all alone, you can also try to kill the gate instead. If, you know, when you kill the gate, he won't be able to repair that, because you will kill his Tita right after. Then you have some units around, you can send them inside and make sure to finish off the base. Because Balrog, you need some practice. Sometimes you mess him up and then it's gonna be impossible. I feel like also that finishing off the Gondor base is just much much easier with Balrog than, the, you know, than finishing off the Rohan base. And that's the army of the dead summon. Beautiful. Now this base is unprotected. The army, the, the, you know, he needs to disengage now. No heroes alive, they're gonna be, you know, he was not even reviving his lords just yet. He lost the lords, which was, you know, who was level 7, I think. We have also Aragorn now on the field, the king of Men of the West. And the top right base of the Isengard's player, Boogeyman, is gonna be defeated first. I mean, obviously, this game was an absolute fiesta. And also unlucky that Saruman is getting out from this city, actually, because he's running straight into the army of the dead. They're gonna be gone now, and it looks like he will be safe. Aragorn is a one-man army, we know that. He's one of the tankiest. I take it back, he's the tankiest hero by far in the game once he has Anduril's, you know, Anduril's Sword and Blade Master active. He almost receives zero damage. 
He's the only hero in the game that can withstand a breath fire from an ignited Balrog, guys. Ooh, that's the arrow volley I was talking about, boys. That's the arrow volley he is hitting like an absolute truck. Top right side is gonna be defeated first. Aragorn has to be careful. There are some structures now shooting him down, but Boogeyman is gonna give up the game. It was a fantastic game. I enjoyed this one, guys. What do you think about this game? I don't understand why Anon left at the first place. Yes, you know, Boogeyman was able to stall the game and actually end up, you know, forcing one of his opponents to leave the game as well. The game was fantastic. I mean, I can understand why the other Rohan player left because he was all about to lose the base to the Balrog. But I don't know why Anon left the game. Boogeyman, big respect. He was actually playing all alone and almost managed to win that game. It was enjoyable for me to cast, guys. If you enjoyed this game, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.